The Book of Job, Chapters 25 through 31. Chapter 25. Then answered Bildad the Shuhite, and said, Dominion and fear are with him. He maketh peace in his high places. Is there any number of his armies? And upon whom doth not his light arise? How then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Behold, even to the moon, and it shineth not. Yea, the stars are not pure in his sight. How much less man that is a worm, and the son of man which is a worm. Job chapter 25, verses 1 through 6. Truthful rebuke from a heart of deceit. Bildad's response to Job is correct, for there is none righteous, no, not one, as far as sin is concerned. However, Job's friends are not condemning Job for being a sinner, for Job never maintained that he was sinless. But what they did condemn Job for was living in sin, as the wicked, and therefore deserving all that has befallen him. Job, however, was not living a life that merits judgment from God. Bildad's statements, though truthful, add no light to why Job is suffering. It must be noted here that as Job continues to overemphasize his own righteousness, moving closer and closer to sin, that Bildad's rebuke becomes increasingly needed. Chapter 26 But Job answered and said, How hast thou helped him that is without power? How savest thou the arm that hath no strength? How hast thou counseled him that hath no wisdom? And how hast thou plentifully declared the thing as it is? To whom hast thou uttered words? And whose spirit came from thee? Dead things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. Hell is naked before him, and destruction hath no covering. He stretcheth out the north over the empty place, and hangeth the earth upon nothing. He bindeth up the waters in his thick clouds, and the cloud is not rent under them. He holdeth back the face of his throne, and spreadeth his cloud upon it. He hath compassed the waters with bounds, until the day and night come to an end. The pillars of heaven tremble, and are astonished at his reproof. He divideth the sea with his power, and by his understanding he smiteth through the proud. By his spirit he hath garnished the heavens. His hand hath formed the crooked serpent. Lo, these are parts of his ways, but how little a portion is heard of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? Job chapter 26, verses 1 through 14. The greatness of God confirmed. Job is not ignorant of the greatness of God. Therefore, Bildad's statements added nothing. They are along the same lines of Eliphaz. See Job chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. Job has shown and will show again that he understands the greatness of God compared to man throughout this chapter. But Job answered and said, How hast thou helped him that is without power? How savest thou the arm that hath no strength? How hast thou counseled him that hath no wisdom? And how hast thou plentifully declared the thing as it is? To whom hast thou uttered words? and whose spirit came from thee. Job chapter 26, verses 1 through 4. No help. Before magnifying the greatness of God, Job here rebukes Bildad for adding no help at all. Verses 1 and 2. Job is without strength and power. He needs a helping hand, but his friend adds no help for Job only condemnation for Job's lack of wisdom. Verses 3 and 4. Dead things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. 
Hell is naked before him, and destruction hath no covering. He stretcheth out the north over the empty place, and hangeth the earth upon nothing. He bindeth up the waters in his thick clouds, and the cloud is not rent under them. He holdeth back the face of his throne, and spreadeth his cloud upon it. He hath compassed the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end. The pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished at his reproof. He divideth the sea with his power, and by his understanding he smiteth through the proud. By his spirit he hath garnished the heavens, his hand hath formed the crooked serpent. Job chapter 26 verses 5 through 13. The all-knowing, all-powerful God. Job acknowledges the greatness of God in his knowledge and power. Nothing is hid from the eyes of God. Hell is open before him. Verses 5 and 6. Thus, one needs to take heed what the word of God says on this matter for only one source of information on hell is accurate, and that is the word of God. All other visions from those who have supposedly gone over the other side are mere speculation. The secrets of creation God knows, verses 7 through 13. God has told us since the times of Job that the earth was hung on nothing, verse 7. Prior to Aristotle's evidence for the spherical shape of the earth, most all believe the earth was flat. However, the Bible is the source of all truth and revealed the earth to be spherical, floating in space thousands of years before. God covers his throne by clouds and darkness. Verses 8 and 9. Please also refer to Psalm 97 verses 1 and 2. God sets bounds for the seas so as not to flood all the earth. Verse 10. And see also Psalm 104 verses 6 through 9. God has the ability to cause the heavens to tremble. Verse 11. See also Isaiah chapter 24, verses 20 and 21. God has divided the sea with his power, smiting the proud as they drowned in the sea. Verse 12. See also Exodus chapter 15, verse 4. God by his spirit garnished the heavens. He made them pleasurable. Verse 13. And see Isaiah chapter 45, verses 12 and 18. And by his hand he made the crooked serpent. Verse 13. This is a reference to the devil, the crooked serpent that will be cast out of heaven. See Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1. And refer also to the book of Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Lo, these are parts of his ways, but how little a portion is heard of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? Job chapter 26, verse 14. How little we really know of God. Job finishes with the understanding that all these ways of God are but a little of our understanding. But who can really know all there is to know about God? Who can understand the thunder of his power? Chapter 27 Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, As God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment, and the Almighty who hath vexed my soul? All the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. My lips shall not speak wickedness nor my tongue utter deceit. God forbid that I should justify you. Till I die, I will not remove mine integrity from me. My righteousness I hold fast, and I will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Job chapter 27, verses 1 through 6. Job maintains his righteousness. According to verse 1, what was previously spoken by Job was a parable. Job swears to not speak wickedness, nor will his tongue utter deceit, 
while he still has breath in him. Verses 3 and 4. Job is not going to justify the remarks of Bildad in chapter 25 by claiming to have sinned. Till he dies, he will not remove his integrity. He will hold fast to his righteousness. Verses 5 and 6. Let mine enemy be as the wicked, and he that riseth up against me as the unrighteous. For what is the hope of the hypocrite, though he hath gained, when God taketh away his soul? Will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him? Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? I will teach you by the hand of God. That which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? Job chapter 27, verses 7 through 12. The hypocrite and the wicked just rewards. Job is not justifying the wicked by claiming his own righteousness, but rather let Job's enemy's fate be as the wicked, the destruction of the soul. Verses 7 and 8. Refer also to the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 28. Job will now go on to teach by the hand of God. Verse 11. The idea is that Job will look at the things done by the hand of God to the wicked. Verse 11. Which things Job says that his friends know perfectly well to be true. Verse 12. This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. Though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the silver." He buildeth his house as a moth, and as a booth that the keeper maketh. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He openeth his eyes, and he is not. Terrors take hold on him as waters. A tempest stealeth him away in the night. The east wind carrieth him away, and he departeth. And as a storm hurleth him out of his place. For God shall cast upon him, and not spare he would fain flee out of his hand. Men shall clap their hands at him and shall hiss him out of his place. Job chapter 27, verses 13 through 23. The portion of the wicked and the heritage of the oppressors. Job will tell what is once again the portion of the wicked man and the heritage of the oppressors. If their children be multiplied, a sign of blessing. It is only for the sword, and they shall not be satisfied with bread. Verse 14. Those that are spared from the sword, death will take them away at the sound of his widow's cry. Verse 15. Though they may seem to prosper, their wealth will the just spend, and their clothes will another wear. Verses 16 and 17. The house he builds will come to naught, just as does the temporary booth of the keeper. Verse 18. The wicked rich will die, lie down, but shall not be gathered. A reference to be cut to pieces in battle. He will not have a decent and respectable burial. Verse 19. The divine wrath of the Almighty will take him away. Waters of the tempest and the east wind, a storm hurled him out of his place. Verses 20 through 22. When the oppressed are freed from their oppressor, they will all rejoice. Verse 23. Chapter 28. Surely there is a vein for the silver, and a place for gold where they find it. Iron is taken out of the earth, and brass is molten out of the stone. He setteth an end to darkness, and searcheth out all perfection. 
the stones of darkness and the shadow of death. The flood breaketh out from the inhabitant, even the waters forgotten of the foot. They are dried up, they are gone away from men. As for the earth, out of it cometh bread, and under it is turned up as it were fire. The stones of it are the place of sapphires, and it hath dust of gold. There is a path which no fowl I knoweth, and which the vulture's eye hath not seen. The lion's whelps have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. He putteth forth his hand upon the rock. He overturneth the mountains by the roots. He cutteth out rivers among the rocks, and his eye seeth every precious thing. He bindeth the floods from overflowing, and the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. Job chapter 28, verses 1 to 11. Precious Things of Men Job is still answering his friends. Job in this chapter compares precious things. First, the precious things found in the earth, gold, silver, sapphires. These are the precious things that can be searched out on the earth. Throughout this chapter, Job tells us where these precious minerals can be found. The veins for silver and gold, iron taken out of the earth, Brass is molten out of the stone, and sapphires come out of the earth where fire is turned up. The idea in Job saying all of this is that there is a place where these precious things are found. God has hidden them in the earth. Man can search them out. However, there is something more precious than sapphires and gold. There is something so precious it cannot be searched by the hands of men. It can only be found with God. But where shall wisdom be found, and where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. The depths saith, It is not in me, and the sea saith, It is not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Whence then cometh wisdom, and where is the place of understanding? seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air. Destruction and death say we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. For he looketh to the ends of the earth and seeth under the whole heaven to make the weight for the winds, and he weigheth the waters by measure. When he made a decree for the rain, and a way for the lightning of the thunder. Then did he see it and declare it. He prepared it, yea, and searched it out. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job chapter 28, verses 12 through 28. The Precious Things of God Job's point is that there is a place where precious things are found and this knowledge is known to the sons of men. It can be searched out and dug out of the earth. But it is not so with wisdom and understanding. Only God knows the way of understanding and the place thereof. Verse 23. Man does not appreciate the value of wisdom and understanding. Verses 13 through 19. In conclusion, like that of Solomon. Please see the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Job tells his friends, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Verse 28.
chapter 29. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, O oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God preserved me, when his candle shined upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me, when I washed my steps with butter, and the rock poured me out rivers of oil, when I went out to the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street, the young men saw me and hid themselves, and the aged arose and stood up. The princes refrained talking and laid their hand on their mouth. The nobles held their peace, and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard me, then it blessed me, and when the eye saw me, it gave witness to me because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless and him that had none to help him. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind, and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the poor, and the cause which I knew not I searched out. And I brake the jaws of the wicked, and plucked the spoil out of his teeth. Then I said, I shall die in my nest, and I shall multiply my days as the sand. My root was spread out by the waters, and the dew lay all night upon my branch. My glory was fresh in me, and my bow was renewed in my hand. Unto me men gave ear and waited and kept silence at my counsel. After my words they spake not again, and my speech dropped upon them. And they waited for me as for the rain, and they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. If I laughed on them, they believed it not, and the light of my countenance they cast not down. I chose out their way and sat chief and dwelt as a king in the army, as one that comforteth the mourners. Job chapter 29 verses 1 through 25. What Job was. This chapter is what Job was before. The next chapter is what Job had become. This chapter paints a clear picture to who Job was before his trying of the Lord. Job desires the time of his youth when the blessings of the Lord abounded in his life. Verses 2 through 5. Back when the blessings of God were poured out upon him. Verse 6. When he sat in the gates of the city, the place of those who laid judgment. Verse 7. Refer also to 2 Samuel chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. He was honored by both the young, the old, verse 8, and the princes and nobles alike, verses 9 and 10. All his words men heeded, and when men saw him, they acknowledged him, verse 11. Job was the one who delivered the poor that cried, the fatherless, and those who had none to help him. Verse 12. Job caused the widow's heart to sing by giving to them in their time of need. Verse 13. Job had a righteous walk and put forth right judgment to the blind and poor by taking from the wicked and giving to the poor. Verses 14 to 17. All that Job did prospered. Verses 18 through 20, as he gave counsel, verse 21 to 23. Job had such a reputation that if he laughed at people, none would believe it, verse 24. Job was chief and king in the land of Uz, verse 25. Yes, this is what Job was, but all this is gone. And then the next chapter is painted another picture quite different than before.
Chapter 30 But now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. Yea, where too might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished. For want and famine they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time desolate and waste, who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief, to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys and caves of the earth and in the rocks, among the bushes they brayed, under the nettles they were gathered together. They were children of fools, yea, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. And now am I their song, yea, I am their byword. They abhor me, they flee far from me, and spare not to spit in my face. Because he hath loosed my cord and afflicted me, they have also let loose the bridle before me. Upon my right hand rise the youth. They push away my feet, and they raise up against me the ways of their destruction. They mar my path. They set forward my calamity. They have no helper. They came upon me as a wide breaking in of waters. In the desolation they rolled themselves upon me. Terrors are turned upon me. They pursue my soul as the wind, and my welfare passeth away as a cloud. And now my soul is poured out upon me. The days of affliction have taken hold upon me. My bones are pierced in me in the night season, and my sinews take no rest. By the great force of my disease is my garment changed. It bindeth me about as the collar of my coat. He hath cast me into the mire, and I am become like dust and ashes. I cry unto thee, and thou dost not hear me. I stand up, and thou regardest me not. Thou art become cruel to me with thy strong hand. Thou opposest thyself against me. Thou liftest me up to the wind. Thou causest me to ride upon it, and dissolvest my substance. For I know that thou wilt bring me to death and to the house appointed for all living. How be it he will not stretch out his hand to the grave, though they cry in his destruction. Did not I weep for him that was in trouble? Was not my soul grieved for the poor? When I looked for good, then evil came unto me. And when I waited for light, there came darkness. My bowels boiled and rested not, the days of affliction prevented me. I went mourning without the sun. I stood up and I cried in the congregation. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. My skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat. My harp also is turned to mourning and my organ into the voice of them that weep. Job chapter 30 verses 1 through 31. What Job had become. But now is how this chapter begins, placing it in sharp contrast to the previous chapter. This chapter is what Job had become. Job first looks of the wicked young men that have him in derision. They spit in his face. Verse 10. These wicked men Job would not have even let their fathers sit with his dogs. Verse 1, now hold sway over him. These children of base men. Verse 8, now make Job their song and byword. They abhor him, avoid him, and spit in his face. Verses 9 and 10. Those who once kept silence and reverence now cease to bridle their tongue. Verse 11. Job is become the physical punching bag of the depraved youth before the city streets of Uz. Verses 12 to 15. Job cries out to God, but none answers. Verses 16 to 24. Job argues for his innocence and righteous acts, saying, Did not I weep for him that was in trouble? 
verse 25. But instead of being rewarded, evil came, verse 26. And now his insights cause him pain, giving him no rest, verse 27. Job went about mourning and crying in the congregation, verse 28. He is the companion of dragons and owls, verse 29. The only song Job is singing is that of mourning and weeping, verses 30 and 31. Chapter 31. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? For what portion of God is there from above? And what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is not destruction to the wicked and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? Job chapter 31 verses 1 to 3. Job maintains his integrity. Job once again maintains his integrity before God. He made a covenant with his eyes, so he watched what he looked at. Verse 1. But what portion from God has he received? He has received the destruction of all that he has, health, home, finances, and family. He is as the wicked that are punished. Doth not he see my ways and count all my steps? If I have walked with vanity, or if my foot hath hastened to deceit, let me be weighed in an even balance, that God may know mine integrity. If my step hath turned out of the way, and mine heart walked after mine eyes, and if any blot hath cleaved to mine hands, then let me sow and let another eat. Yea, let my offspring be rooted out. If mine heart have been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind unto another, and let others bow down upon her. For this is a heinous crime, yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges. For it is a fire that consumeth to destruction, and would root out all mine increase. If I did despise the cause of my manservant, or of my maidservant, when they contended with me, what then shall I do when God riseth up? And when he visiteth, what shall I answer him? Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did not one fashion us in the womb? If I have withheld the poor from their desire, or have caused the eyes of the widow to fail, or have eaten my morsel myself alone, then the fatherless hath not eaten thereof. For from my youth he was brought up with me, as with a father, and I have guided her from my mother's womb. If I have seen any perish for want of clothing, or any poor without covering, if his loins have not blessed me, and if he were not warmed with the fleece of my sheep, if I have lifted up my hand against the fatherless, when I saw my help in the gate, then let mine arm fall from my shoulder blade, and mine arm be broken from the bone. For destruction from God was a terror to me, and by reason of his highness I could not endure. If I have made gold my hope, or have said to the fine gold, Thou art my confidence. If I rejoiced because my wealth was great, and because mine hand had gotten much. If I beheld the sun when it shined, or the moon walking in brightness, and my heart hath been secretly enticed, or my mouth hath kissed my hand, this also were an iniquity to be punished by the judge. For I should have denied the God that is above. If I rejoiced at the destruction of him that hated me, or lifted up myself when evil found him, Neither have I suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to his soul. If the men of my tabernacle said not, Oh, that we had of his flesh, we cannot be satisfied. The stranger did not lodge in the street, but I opened my doors to the traveler. If I covered my transgressions as Adam, by hiding mine iniquity in my bosom, 
Did I fear a great multitude? Or did the contempt of families terrify me, that I kept silence and went not out of the door? Oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me, and that mine adversary had written a book. Surely I would take it upon my shoulder and bind it as a crown to me. I would declare unto him the number of my steps. As a prince would I go near unto him. If my land cry against me, or that the furrows likewise thereof complain. If I have eaten the fruits thereof without money, or have caused the owners thereof to lose their life. Job chapter 31 verses 4 through 39. If God sees all, can he not see my integrity? Does God not see all my steps is Job's question. The thought throughout the remainder of this chapter is, why doesn't God acknowledge the integrity of Job's life, the steps he's taken? At the end of this chapter, he will desire for God to answer him and Job could declare all his steps before him. Verses 35 and 37. Job is asking God to take knowledge of him, to weigh him in the balance, that God may know his integrity. Verses 4 through 6. What follows is Job's defense of his integrity by stating if. Verses 5, 7, 9, 13, 16, 19 to 21, 24 to 26, 29, 31, 33, and 38 to 39. Job had done any wrong, God should judge him. Job will now run through all the different scenarios that would merit judgment from God if he were involved in them. If Job had allowed his feet to take him places he ought not to be and if his heart walked after the lust of his eyes, see the strange woman in Proverbs 5. Or if Job has put his hands to evil, then let judgment come. Verses 7 through 12. If Job has mistreated those under him, his manservant or maidservant, then let judgment come. Verses 13 to 15. If Job has mistreated the poor, widow, or fatherless, let judgment come from the Almighty. Verses 16 through 28. If Job has retaliated to hurt those who hate him, or sought to do them evil, or even cursed them, let God judge him, verses 29 and 30. If Job had not cared for those strangers that needed lodging by providing them food and shelter, then let God's judgment come, verses 31 and 32. If Job had any secret sin, verse 33, or has skirted to avoid responsibilities, then judgment should come, Verses 33 and 34. Job cries out to God to hear his argument. Oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me. Verses 35 to 37. If Job had stolen from the farmers or abused the land for gain, then let God bring forth thistles instead of wheat and cockle instead of barley. Verses 38 to 40. Job states that his words are ended. Verse 40. Job had planned on not speaking any further for his three friends have ceased to answer Job. Chapter 32 verse 1. However, there is one that will answer Job, one that had been waiting and watching all along. A young man of wisdom and understanding. Elihu, it is Elihu that will now speak for the next five chapters. After Elihu, God will speak, and then Job will break his silence with, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. Once I have spoken, but I will not answer, yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. See Job chapter 40, verses 4 through 5.